from the News Channel 5 Network, this is Morning Line with Nick Barris. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us on Morning Line. Nick Barris here with you on a Wednesday. And uh, we've got a good show. This is something I've been thinking a lot about, just not even before what happened this past weekend in Humphreys County with the devastating floods, but some of the extreme weather that we see, okay, and, and what it can do with, you know, the weather patterns settling over a county like Humphreys and then getting, you know, 17 inches of rain in five hours. How do you prepare for something like that? The flash floods, what it means. Uh, and really, this is something that our civil engineers are gonna have to start thinking about. One question a lot of people are asking right now is, what, if anything, can, can be done now? Because nothing could, I don't think, be done to prevent what happened this weekend with regard to that much rain. But now we know that can happen. And, and the question is, what can be done to maybe prevent that? That moving into the future and again that's something that our, our civil engineers um, you know need to start thinking about as we plan communities and neighborhoods and cities and we're near waterways and and things along those lines so we're going to talk about that talk about climate change global warming the potential impacts of course on natural disasters all of that this morning and we've got a, a great guest to talk about it who can take your calls and questions as well um, she is a assistant professor of civil and environmental engineering at Van Vanderbilt. Hibba Baroud's with us this morning. Good morning to you, Hibba. Good morning, Nick. How are you? Good. I, I'm well, and it's nice to have you uh, with us this morning. You know, that's, that's really what it comes down to. You know, back in 2010, we had this devastating flood here in, in the Nashville area. You may recall, I don't know if you are here at the time, but it was drenched, our station was flooded. They got about 13 inches of rain over a, a two day period and it was devastating. And they called that the thousand year flood, okay? Well, here we are 11 years later and we got 17 inches in five hours in Humphreys County. I don't know, what is that, the 10,000 year flood? I mean, they're happening more frequently. What, what do you think is going on here? Um, so, uh, you're, you're absolutely right. These, uh, w what we're seeing is actually the trend uh, that unfortunately we are in now, which is what we uh, previously know as the thousand year flood will become more frequent uh, in the future. And so this is the result of uh, environmental uh, changes, but also changes in our infrastructure and in our communities, our cities, how they're developing. So there are different factors that are affecting the occurrence and the impact of, of these disasters. There's that natural phenomena where the disaster itself, the, the rain intensity, it, its frequency, they are becoming more intense and more frequent in the future. Uh, but we are also becoming more vulnerable. And then you put these two together and you get a huge disasters with uh, devastating impacts like this one that we've uh, witnessed last week. Can you talk a little bit about what you witnessed? And, and we're going to play some of the video, but the way I understand it, and a lot of people are asking, how could this happen? Um, we had a family that was in an apartment complex not far from uh, a river there in Waverly, and they lost mm -hmm. their twin seven-month-old. Says the water hit their apartment door, blew it open so fast, three, four feet of water, when it was all said and done, close to eight feet of water filled their apartment. And, and people were wondering, though, I mean, well, couldn't they see this coming and get out of there? And I'm trying to explain to folks how a flash flood, there's almost no time to react. Can you talk about how this happened? You're absolutely right. There is no time to react once the flash flood uh, 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 hits. But uh, there's there are early warning systems that can help save lives in these cases. So if we uh, focus on, on prediction or anticipating uh, the intensity of the rain and then translating that into potential impacts to the community, we can send uh, uh, warnings early enough for families to prepare or even in these severe cases evacuate. So having evacuation plans so that uh, uh, the most vulnerable communities are protected and they can act in a timely manner so that they can get out before the water uh, hits their uh, But here's areas. the thing, here's the thing, you know, Professor, I, I mean, all the local television stations 
had issued flash flood warnings. Um, we knew there was going to be rain coming in. No one knew it was going to be this much. So, I mean, what you're talking about there, that was done. I mean, people have been out. A lot of times we hear flash floods, and then we, we see water coming across some roadways. And if you're smart, you don't drive away from it. And some basements get flooded. But this was an outlier. I mean, those things, I mean, what, are we supposed to anticipate now, anytime we hear a flash flood, that we should expect what happened in Humphreys County? So this can be tricky because, like you said, with, with flash floods, when we get these warnings, well, the, when we think about it, we think that, okay, well, I should just avoid driving, or there are certain roads that we know that are going to flood. But that, that goes back to your first question, is that these events that we're used to and getting these warnings uh, for are going to become more intense. So what we call now an outlier like this one may not be an outlier in the future. And the trick here is to understand the true risk in that area when we're looking at the entire portfolio of the the potential uh, intensity of the hazard so we will we we will still get those flash flood warnings where a road might flood or we shouldn't drive around uh, and be careful but in that portfolio of potential risks that can hit this area there are these what we now call outliers, but will no longer become outliers in the future, we also need to prepare for these. They are very rare events, they are very extreme, but it's extremely important that we do not uh, uh, think of them as an outlier and we prepare for them just like we prepare for the other uh, more frequent event that we witness nowadays. Do you see this type of thing happening um, pretty much a direct result to climate change, global warming? Of course, there's other aspects as well as we see the growth of population, building in floodplains, maybe choosing to build in an area too close to a waterway. What are some of the factors and is, is at the top of the list you think this, this global warming or climate change we see that can bring some more severe weather? Absolutely. Climate change is one of the driving factors for these disasters or these natural hazards to become disasters like this. So generally greenhouse, greenhouse gas emissions are, are causing the temperature of the planet to increase. This is leading to the dry seasons to be, become drier and the wet seasons to become uh, uh, wetter. And so this is we're seeing this through more intense flooding. We're seeing this through more uh, uh, frequent and more intense hurricanes uh, that are happening around the country. So, so certainly uh, uh, climate change is a, a big part of the equation. And it's not only affecting these kinds of events, it's also affecting uh, uh, wildfires, uh, uh, um, uh, extreme heat weather as well. So it's affecting uh, a whole suite of uh, natural hazards that are impacting the entire country. Um, but like I said, it, it's one part of the equation. So it's the natural hazards, one part of the, of the climate change is one part of that equation. But at the same time, we are also putting ourselves in a situation where we are becoming more vulnerable. Our infrastructure is aging. Uh, we need to maintain it and upgrade it in a way that it's climate resilient. Um, these trends we're seeing in, in, in Tennessee or in Nashville development, developing in areas that are uh, uh, prone to flood risk can also increase our vulnerability. And so there are two parts of that uh, equation. And when you put them together, that's where you, you end up in this disastrous situation. Gotcha. Listen, uh, Professor, stay where you are. We have to take a break. When we come back, we're going to take some phone calls, continue to talk about this. And I also want to delve more deeply into some of the things as a, a civil engineer, you know, that people when they're planning things now, communities, or what can maybe be done? A lot of people wondering in Waverly. I know you may not have a handle exactly on what the structure is like there, but what type of things can be done? People are asking, well, could they dredge the creeks? Could they build jetties or levees? Things like that. We'll talk more about that and take phone calls with our guest right after this.